Uh, hi, everybody. I actually decided to present in English because I want everybody, uh, also those watch watching on the, on the videos, to understand me. Um, and the reason why I want that is because I'm going to talk about uh, the Arc Engels Group, so the company I work at, um, and how BIM incorporates into the architecture we create. Um, so this is a slide of a big city, so it would kill, we call it, because we focus on architecture as an art. Like, this is our main focus. Um, and with the architecture that we create, we want to incorporate some ideas about art and push boundaries even further every time, and uh, just like some general life ideas as well. Um, yeah, this, this is our uh, logo, and we are a company of more than 700 people. Um, out of those 700 people, we have 46 nationalities, which I personally really find so cool because you have people from all around the world, and then like this intercultural communication and different perspectives, different, I don't know, ideas of how to design uh, are very visible in that. Um, our, we have five offices all around the world, and uh, this can also be seen in the projects we create. Uh, these are some of the projects, again, all around the world, Europe, the States, Asia. Um, but I want to also talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about sp some specific projects later on. Uh, our architecture shapes and develops as, li uh, like, as life de develops as well. We have this approach of called uh, in information-driven design, where we really investigate the area that we're building in and how we want to create the architecture to, to resemble that area. Also, one very, very important thing, also regarding BIM, is our yes attitude. Instead of saying less is more, we say yes is more. So we rarely say no, that's a bad idea. We say, yeah, okay, we can work with that, we can think like that. And then our architecture develops even a step further. This can also be seen from our, some of our first projects. These are two projects in Copenhagen. On the left side, you can see the VM houses. And on the right side, maybe some of you actually know this building. It's called the mountain. And the idea behind the mountain is if we can combine apartments and uh, houses in one building. So that's why we made like a houses on top of each other and leaving parking space underneath them. This project uh, was in collaboration with Vestre. That's a sustainable uh, design uh, furniture company. And this is a project some hour, uh, around two hours from Oslo in Norway. And the, the interesting thing about this is that all the trees that have been cut have actually been incorporated into the building themselves. And if you ever visit, you can actually go on top of the roof here, you can climb, and you can see how the workers work inside. Uh, next project, and this is the last to represent the company I wanted to, to show, uh, is one of our newest finalized projects, and these are the, the Google, uh, new, new Google, Google uh, headquarters in the, in the Bay Area. So this is just south of San Francisco. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can see these dragon scale uh, solar cells and the open offices inside. Yeah, uh, as I said, I work as a project BIM lead there, and my road to getting to BIG was uh, studying in Denmark. I studied on a, a course that, which is something between an architect and an engineer, and then I took a master's degree in BIM management. Afterwards, I worked at Sweco, Sweco which is a very big engineering company, actually, uh, and then since early this year, I work at BIG. Uh, I think this slide is a bit uh, messed up with the format, but doesn't matter. I wanted to show that our uh, design technology is that BIM is only a piece of it. It's an important piece of it, but it's a piece of it. We also uh, work with tools. But the main idea here is that the technology is here to help us create amazing architecture. And this is our main focus. We want to keep this agile mindset and focus on creating the, the best architecture and not stuck, uh, being stuck to, to one single program. Um, today, of course, we're focusing on BIG, on, on, on BIM, and this is the kind of shape we have across our projects. Uh, so th this is very flat hierarchy, you can call it, where we have uh, design, uh, director of design technology, Jens, and he is mainly in charge, this is for Copenhagen office, just to mention, but he is mainly in charge of staffing and strategy choices and uh, some contracts, and he is very closely connected with, with the BIM team. In the BIM team, we do, we do R&D, so development, automatization, also some contractual stuff, LODs and how we work with that. And then for each specific project, or for most projects, we have a BIM lead assigned to that project, uh, which takes the responsibility for the model, making sure that it works with uh, many different uh, disciplines across, and then also to help uh, support the team into the, uh, with, with building, uh, building information modeling. 
This is a slide which I want to show that we, are, we, ha we have found currently the best method to develop our project is actually creating two models, two same models, simultaneously in Rhino and Revit. The reason for that is because Rhino is a very good program for quick design studies, uh, some like researching ideas, how something can, can work and something can look, also for very uh, good renders. And Revit is, of course, BIM focused where we can put all this information in, produce drawings, and communicate, communicate it across project parties. So focusing now on Revit, it's not only Revit. This is our, actually, BIM toolkit, where Revit is helped by a myriad of other programs. We use, for automatization, we use Dynamo, we use Py Revit, and also an important thing I uh, want to mention here uh, is uh, Excel, because we actually use ID8 to kind of export many information and then work with it and then import it back into Revit. And of course, I'm going to be mentioning Rhino inside and Beam, how to get the Rhino model back into Revit and on vice versa. Uh, this, some, this, this here is a Revit ribbon. So when you open Revit, you have a ribbon up, up there, which is developed by us, by, by the Beam team. And it's, it's, a, it's a constant work in progress. As our project changes and as uh, BIM changes, as you know, all of you know, it changes in the world very rapidly, we want to incorporate all this knowledge into a kind of one-stop shop for both those new at the company and those who have been there for a longer time. So this ribbon, uh, you, you, you can also like, read about our drawing standards, get families from all, all, everywhere. We have some Power BI scripts to kind of analyze how the building is performing. Um, Next tool, which I really personally also find it very cool, is actually Kinship. Uh, Kinship is a very light but power, powerful tool. Um, the, the, how it works is it's a library of our content. So we can directly in Revit search after a family across all our projects. So we can borrow and help each other across projects. But it also gives you a very good model uh, health um, kind of analysis, so you can see how many families are used, how, how many families are not necessary, and so on. We have, we have of course, um, even though our approach is always kind of reinventing ourselves, we needed to standardize some things. So the, for, for the families and for the objects we use, we uh, created templates, and to have a, like a um, big signature on all our drawings, we have a drawing standard. Um, and these are around, like, in, in different scales, and also the, the red and, the, and black texts, text boxes, you can see, are uh, also, like, some notes on how to think about the building. Next slide um, <laughs> is just actually a quick mention of our approach to uh, BIM standards. We all know that if you get an approach with, like, a huge document with 50 pages, it's very hard to work with that, actually. So our approach is to make it as simple as possible. Um, of course, we always communicate with the client first, and this is an important point. We always ask the client what their needs are, and not what the BIM expert think he or she wants to create. Uh, coming back to the earlier kind of mention about the yes, this is actually a Danish expression for a yes hat. You either have a yes hat or a no hat. If you have a yes hat, you're like, you're open to changes. You want to explore the ideas further. And if you have a no hat, you're like, ah, just the person who always says, no, no, this is a bad way. So this is also, I wanted to mention how to create architecture like this in Revit, it's important to have this yes hat attitude. Um, this next slide is, again, some of our projects. But I want to focus on some case studies of our projects. And the first one I want to talk about is Scope and Hill. I don't know if you heard about this project. But it's actually, uh, uh, in Croatian, palionica smeća, or um, waste to energy uh, plant, uh, which actually, produce, for every three kilos of trash, you get four kilowatt hours of uh, electric energy, and you get five hours of, like, to, to be able to heat your home. So it's very productive. And actually, uh, the smoke that comes out of it is reminiscent of mountain smoke because it's 99.9% .9 water vapor with just a little bit of CO2, so no toxins in it. And that's why we, we thought, can we put actually a ski slope, reminding of a mountain, on, on top of a building? And as this, has been in the early, this, this competition has been won in early 2010. We were still new to BIM. Most of the team was new to BIM. But we actually managed to create this building here. So if you ever visit Copenhagen, you can actually climb uh, the, the, the Copen Hill all the way to the top, no questions asked. And you can also climb with the wall, one of the highest, if not the highest wall, uh, catering wall, uh, climbing wall in, in, in the world, I think. And you can also ski on, on top of that. Next project is still a work in progress. 
And the reason for that is because this project is located in Aarhus. Aarhus is the second largest city in Denmark. Um, and this whole island is actually a, kind of an old um, port, which we, we have developed many buildings. From the right side is the uh, Aarhus house, and in the middle you have the clock tower, also the, the, how you swim this, uh, this how do you call it, harbor. Uh, and on the, on the whole left side you, have, you can see the hotel. Um, this is the picture from just recent picture, because we have just completed the clock tower. That's the middle project. Um, and we have uh, a, a spot left on the left side uh, for the hotel. Why I wanted to mention this project is because the hotel, the, the idea of the building is to maximize views. It's also approach accessible for everybody, no matter if you are a guest or not, to climb around, go all the way to, do, to the top. And it's, 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 the idea was to maximize views. The thing is that these renders here are from 2016. So this building has been for years in the making. And one of the things we, had have, we, we have had is a big conference hall. And then you all know what happened in the 2020. Corona hit, and we were like, OK, we need to change our design. Uh, so that's why I said it's still a work in progress. And uh, actually, actually I'm, I'm, I'm quite involved in this project working. We, we, we have big deliveries coming up. Uh, last project as a case study I wanted to mention is this very cool uh, looking building. Um, this is a project called Oppo. And Oppo is a Chinese phone manufacturer. Maybe not so popular here in Europe, but in China, in Asia, they're very popular. And we wanted to incorporate they, their kind of logo, their name, into the, into the building uh, it, it's itself. That's why you get this cool facade, uh, like a round facade. The problem appeared when we needed to put it in BIM. This slide shows how the left-hand side, and so this uh, left uh, figure and the middle of the figure are done in Revit. But the right side is actually done in Rhino. And then we used a small tool called Beam to get it from Rhino to Revit. Because it would just take a lot more time uh, uh, like to, to, to get this building to work, work with, it, with itself. Lastly, after these projects, I wanted to mention just some BIM lessons that we kind of, how our approach works. Um, I'm not going to be too long, but I would just say that if you're, for, for those starting to, in BIM, I would take, say, start, take it one step, a step at a time. But that's important. It's just important to start. Um, also, uh, I think actually Petrana mentioned it earlier, that how, how they combined their knowledge with some BIM support, and then they, they actually kind of kicked off. Because it's not so much that, I think that you need to have some, some BIM support, and that BIM support actually needs to think as simple as possible. How can, you, I, I, can, I, how can I quickly develop this project? Uh, for those companies already in BIM, I would say that because this is such a changing field, like you, you all know uh, that BIM and tools, everything's popping up and what's going to happen, and, and you always need to be very agile. But that's why I would say that you need to focus on data and interoperability. You need to know what data, who needs when. Um, and also, what I mentioned earlier, put your client first. Don't just make BIM for the sake of BIM, but talk to your client, educate them, and see what they need. For those individuals uh, that, uh, that work with BIM, I, I would just say that embrace the big beginner's mindset. We all know it's a changing industry. You can't uh, be like, you know, you can't stuck to your old ways. Um, but I would also say, follow your interest. I mean, as you can see, I'm not an architect or an engineer, but I still kind of, through my path of BIM, I got too big. I mean, and it's not to say, you know, I love both architecture and engineering, but I would say you don't have to go after some certifications just to think because you're thinking, ah, oh, this is going to make me better or something. I think you should just follow your interest and see where it takes you. Um, this is actually second to last slide. Um, and this is a moon base uh, which we designed with NASA. Um, and why I wanted to mention this project is because even if we get to design this, or actually to build it, we designed it, but even, even if we get to build it, we're probably going to use BIM. Um, that was it for me, so thank you all for the attention.